Benjeli hunters mimic the sound of the blue diker to call them closer. Bayaka all take pride in mimicking the sounds they hear. They make these calls to have a successful hunt, and when later telling the story of the hunt, great attention will be paid to the acoustic features of events. Hunter-gatherers see themselves as agents interacting with other natural agents in nature rather than as subjects in a society somehow outside of nature. Music, dance and ritual can all be treated as modes of communication on a continuum from non-verbal to verbal, which has music and language at opposite ends. The Bayaka will choose their mode of communication depending on who they're communicating with. Villagers, family, animals, spirits. If communicating with spirits, they will choose music and dance. This is a bay called Abali. It was recorded when Sue and I arrived at a forest camp in Kenya as a welcome to us. Listen to the hocketing here. There were several older women at this camp, definitely initiated into yelling. Bali is different from a me such as Bwambwa in that it doesn't always manifest a me, and if it does, the me is not called a Bali but Kose. It's often performed just for amusement, or as in this case, as a welcome to visitors to a forest camp. Sometimes a man will dance, but he's not a manifestation of me. The dancer in the Boomer is similar to a Bali in that me does not appear, but the me called Boomer can be present, but will only be visible to the initiates. The interlocking polyphonies and polyrhythms form a ritual system capable of communicating with the forest as a whole, the rest of society and outsiders such as forest spirits, farmers and Europeans. The focus on words when discussing language is due to our modern bias to lexical expression. If everyone speaks at once it can be confusing but if many people sing together, their message is reinforced. In speech, one body communicates. In music, many bodies do. Let's have a closer look at the rhythm of the boomer dance. The first drum sets the tempo, playing an eighth note triplet with a stick just before the beat, played with the hand. The second drum plays the beat and an eighth note triplet just after it occasionally adding quarter note triplets across the beats. Usually there are only two drums, but in this case a third drum plays a variation on the second part. The clapping pattern is really important. If you put a clap in on the beat, the whole rhythm becomes clearer. Bring in the first drum and the groove becomes apparent. The second drum adds some variations in colour to the beat. This is augmented by the third drum. Now bring in the voices and the dancer. The dancer is also the solo percussionist. The shakers played with his feet. 
the footsteps and the rhythm interacting with the other drummers. The teenage girls have a really important role with their clapping as well as their singing. By improvising within certain parameters, their syncopation can really change the energy, attaining that transcendental moment when the singers, drummers and dancer are all in the Kaluli groove. It feels so good because it achieves that feeling of maximised participation when everyone is in that communion of the moment. So what is May? May is a general term for an existence that is formless but is felt as an aura. May is usually translated as spirit, although I feel this has too many connotations from a thousand years of Christianity to be a satisfactory translation. Here is Pelembier talking about May. May is the name of the devil. The devil is what? The devil lives in the forest. There are many kinds of devil that we, the Baka, have which we call to come and dance. There is the Bwambwa, there is Jengi, the most powerful May, because he doesn't joke. He can kill. He also has knowledge. If you call Jengi an Eid, a person will pass by and not see you. You can see from his language that his words have been influenced by missionaries. Although this translation of May has given the Baka a very different idea as to what a devil is than we have. The Baka believe that May live in the forest. They enjoy dancing and singing so can be called into camp by a good bay. While they sometimes play tricks on people and can be dangerous, they never use sorcery or witchcraft. They sometimes appear in dreams to impart knowledge of medicinal plants, new songs or dances. I see it as that entity you feel at the climax of a great musical performance or a football match or a play. That tangible presence, that's May. Each May will have a guardian. To become a guardian, you can buy or inherit the guardianship, or you can catch the May in the forest, or they can come to you in a dream. Could the May also be seen as the muse? Is there a huge difference between being inspired to write a song and learning a new song from a May who visited you in a dream? Or even catching it in the forest and returning with a new bay? There have been many times when playing with two or three other musicians that I've come to the end of a good session, the music has stopped, and suddenly there are only the three or four of us. While we were playing, it was as if there was another entity present. It's not so much that you notice it's there, you're too involved in the moment, it's more that you notice its absence when the music stops. Every musician that I've spoken to about this knows exactly what I mean, yet it's very rarely acknowledged or spoken about. Could that presence be May? But it isn't just during the traditional dances that May can appear. In this recording made in 2002, during this spontaneous musicking session, some Elili Mays appeared out of the forest, dancing shyly at the edge of the clearing. <laughs>
all the bayaka see this as the whole point in musicking, to generate a great vibe to encourage the may from the forest. <laughs> A good bay will be traded widely. They are even traded between Baka and Aka. This song, Mangisa, recorded by Louis Sarno in Central African Republic and played by a group of Aka, was originally bought from the Baka across the River Sangha in Cameroon. With their combination of polyphonic singing, polyrhythmic percussion and a masked dancer, the Bayaka are experts at manifesting me. The energy focuses on the dancer who becomes the personification of the particular me. Each be creates its own unique emotions personified in the me. It's not supernatural to them, as they know it's there. There are many creatures in the forest that they hear but never see. Why should they believe in these any more than in a presence that they have felt but never seen? By being present at these spirit dances all their lives, children grow up learning that the purpose of musicking is not about making music, but about manifesting May. In part five, we'll look at how the backers' lives have changed over the last 30 years and how they've adapted their music.